The certification process is already time consuming and expensive, and that's assuming that you pass the first time. But if your product fails certification, it can quickly spiral into redesigns, extra testing fees, and long frustrating delays. I've seen plenty of designs that were fully functional, and the founder thought they were almost ready for production. But once they hit certification testing, then unexpected issues came up and turned into a major roadblock for the project. If you're lucky, it might only take a minor layout tweak to fix any issues, but more often, if you haven't designed with certifications in mind from the start, you're gonna be facing major design changes that cost serious time and money. So in this video, I'm gonna show you seven PCB design mistakes that can lead to certification failures and how to avoid them. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm a former microchip design engineer for Texas Instruments who brought my own hardware product to life. Now I help others develop and launch new electronic products. Okay, let's get started. Mistake number one is ignoring EMC in your PCB layout. So most certification failures come down to one thing and that's electromagnetic compatibility or EMC for short. So if your design radiates too much noise or is too susceptible to interference, it's going to fail EMC testing, whether you're doing FCC for the US, CE for Europe, or both. And a lot of that comes down to the PCB layout. For example, if you run long signal traces without a solid return path underneath the trace, like over a split ground plane, for instance, then those traces effectively become like antennas. High speed signals need a continuous ground reference to prevent radiating noise. And without that, they can leak emissions and fail radiated emissions tests. Another common issue is ground plane fragmentation. If your ground plane is chopped up by vias or routing, then you end up breaking any low impedance return path, which again increases emissions. And then there's the power input filtering. If you skip ferrite beads, bulk capacitors, or LC filters on power inputs, you're inviting conducted emissions issues. Even power supply layout matters. A switching regulator with long loops or poor grounding can radiate across a wide frequency range and end up killing your EMC results. So don't just think about functionality, think about emissions and immunity because the test lab will. Check the description below to grab my free certification bundle. It includes my product certification guide, a cheat sheet with all of the estimated cost, and a quick reference list of all seven PCB design mistakes covered in this video. Okay, mistake number two is relying on a two layer board without a solid ground plane. Two layer boards are great for quick prototypes and low cost dev boards, but when it comes to passing certification, they can often create more problems than they solve. Why? Because they almost never provide a clean continuous ground plane. In a four layer board, or more, you typically can dedicate an entire internal layer to ground. That gives high-speed signals a consistent return path right underneath their traces, minimizing current loop area and reducing any emissions. But on a two-layer board, you usually end up with a patchwork of copper pores that get chopped up by signal traces, or worse, you just use ground traces to connect everything. That breaks up the return paths and increases EMI risk. Even worse, those chopped up ground areas can act like unintended antennas, radiating noise instead of containing it. And that is a fast path to a failed EMC test. If you're serious about passing certification, using a solid ground plane, ideally on a dedicated internal layer, is one of the best decisions that you can make, especially if your design uses any type of wireless radio, whether that's a custom design or you're using a pre-certified wireless module. Mistake number three is no shielding or filtering on external interfaces. If it connects to the outside world, it needs some attention, whether that's USB, power jacks, antennas, even long GPIOs that connect along wires, those can all become potential antennas for noise or interference. If you skip ferrite beads, ESD protection, or common mode chokes, you're going to see problems in emissions testing. And if your board passes alone, but fails when connected to a cable, this is often going to be the reason. So add filtering, add protection, and make sure your return paths are solid. Mistake number four, thinking you're only certifying the PCB. 
One of the biggest misconceptions about certification is thinking it only applies to the electronics or specifically to the circuit board. But that's not how it works. What actually gets certified is the entire product. Your PCB, your enclosure, the wiring, the connectors, everything. So if you design and test the board in isolation from the rest of the product, then you later put it in a metal enclosure with standoffs, screws, and cables, you're going to end up with getting completely different results in the testing lab. Even plastic enclosures can change emissions or susceptibility, especially if they limit ventilation or are packed tightly with other noisy subsystems. And metal enclosures, if not grounded properly, can create resonance chambers or act like unintended antennas. The mistake is treating certification like a board level exercise. It's not. Make sure you test your final assembled product, not just the bare board. Include the enclosure, the wiring, and anything else the customer will receive as part of the product. Mistake number five is poor antenna placement or grounding. If your product includes Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or any other wireless radio, you're going to need to pass intentional radiator testing. Unless, of course, you use a pre-certified module for that wireless functionality, then you can usually be tested as a non-intentional radiator. But when it comes to intentional radiator testing, the antenna is often the problem. If you place it too close to the ground fill or your enclosure or other noisy components, it can cause performance issues like reduced wireless range or detuned antenna characteristics. But even more importantly, poor antenna design can lead to failed RF certification due to spurious emissions or insufficient radiated power. Even worse, if you use a pre-certified module but change the layout around the antenna, especially the ground clearance area, or the keep out zone, then you might end up voiding that certification, forcing yourself to go through the full RF testing from scratch. Always follow the reference layout exactly. Leave the recommended clearance around the antenna, avoid routing signals nearby, and don't place it underneath metal parts of the enclosure. Mistake number six, no isolation between high and low voltage. If you have any high voltage circuits that connect to AC mains, power conversion, etc., then you're going to need to think about safety testing. That means creepage and clearance. It means isolation, and it means understanding which parts of your board must stay separate from each other. If you place high voltage and low voltage parts too close together or route high voltage signals near low voltage signals, your board is going to have problems. Pay attention to trace spacings, remove copper fills under any isolation areas, and follow the standards for your target market. Check the description below to grab my free certification bundle. It includes my product certification guide, a cheat sheet with all of the estimated cost, and a quick reference list of all seven PCB design mistakes covered in this video. Mistake number seven is placing noisy components near sensitive traces. When it comes to passing EFC and RF certification, component placement is just as important as trace routing. Placing high speed or noisy components like switching regulators, crystal oscillators, digital buses, etc. too close to sensitive analog traces, antennas, or RF paths can create unexpected interference. This can result in spurious emissions that show up in radiated emissions tests or degrade the performance of nearby wireless circuits, potentially causing certification failures. For example, placing a switching regulator too close to an RF trace can inject noise directly into the signal path, especially if there's inadequate shielding or grounding between them. Group noisy and quiet sections of your board, use shielding where needed, and pay attention to layout isolation. Keep sensitive analog and RF areas physically separated from high-speed digital sections whenever possible. If you're wondering what certifications your product is going to need and when you're going to need them, then you're going to want to watch this video right here next.